thinking, Temblo, dude, we've not seen you for like a week. I know, I know. Fact of the matter is, there's just not been much I wanted to talk about. And then this morning I saw something I wanted to talk about, and then another thing I wanted to talk about. And then I get home and there's another thing I want to talk about. It's like, I wait yonks for stories to appear that I want to talk to you guys about, and then BOOM! It all comes at once. It's nuts. So, let's get kicked off, shall we? First of all, Apple. They, they have their Apple conference, you know, they do their, let's have some spangly bits to the pre-existing phones and make them a bit more special and you know we'll make the iPad even bigger and even more expensive of a crazy keyboard that costs a ton and a crazier pen that costs a stupid amount for what it is you know but then they go and say oh and your Apple TV you can, uh, you can now play games and that what? <laughs> so now the Apple TV is also a gaming platform oh my god <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's as if there wasn't enough things to try to you know soak up your gaming budget. Now if you've got Apple TV, you've got to try and buy games for that as well. Madness. And then of course everybody's going like, well, what about this new ghost? Is no one not going to be good as a ghost in Destiny? And then of course you'll have the other side going, well, I don't play Destiny anymore. Who plays Destiny anymore? Ah, Destiny's dead. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like. I'm slap bang in the middle. I'm like, well, I used to play Destiny, and at some point I will go back to Destiny, but right now I'm busy with other things. You know, I've just finished Batman, I've just finished Stick of Truth, I'm presently playing Limbo and really loving it. It's so punishing, but it's a brilliant game, really atmospheric. I recommend it if you haven't played it. Um, yeah, and then of course I've got Assassin's Creed Syndicate coming soon, and obviously with Fallout 4 to come, so. You know, I think it's going to be a while before I get back to Destiny. Also, I'm going to wait till I've got a friend who's supposedly going to be selling me the Taken King DLC for a bit cheap. So fingers crossed on that one. Because I'm not paying all that for that. No, that's just not happening. If I can get it cheap, woohoo. If I can't, then well. But anyway, it's all like, you know, Nolan North taking over from Dinklebot. There is no more Dinklebot. And I've seen, you know, what the, what the North's ghost is like and I gotta say I neither disapprove nor approve. It's just another voice. You know, there's some parts of the dialogue where he injects maybe a touch more character and there's some parts of the with dialogue where Dinklage injects a bit more character. Now Dinklage of course is a screen actor. He comes at it from a slightly different way and of course Mr North comes at it from being a voiceover actor. So he has a different way of doing it. But uh, I must admit, when I hear Nolan North's one, there's a li there's like a little bit of C three PO mixed in with a little bit of Hal, and to me that kind of gives it a bit more of a sci fi punch, you know. But that's just my own personal. You may have your own opinion. <laughs> this is the internet, after all. Everyone has an opinion on the internet, especially me. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, what else has been going on the day? Of, oh my god. Um, completely addicted to Fallout uh, Shelter, by the way. That game is so annoying but so addictive, it's complete crack. Oh my god. Um, yeah, and then of course I get home and um, Rockstar go, We have a new thing! Oh, yeah, we're taking the Grand Theft Auto Online, you know. And we're throwing in, at every 12 minute intervals, free mode games where you can go in and do weird stuff like you can drive around in a dome that moves around and the dome will shift around erratically and steadily get smaller and smaller and you've got to stay in the dome and if you leave the dome for more than 9 seconds, boom, your car blows up and you're out the game. And it's like, and there's chasing the beast guy and there's like a, something that's like speed and just flying about the air and gaining money and just a zillion different things to get involved in on the fly and it's just gonna open up Grand Theft Auto and we're getting the editing tools yes that I remember I spoke of a while ago and I said that Dave S would love them ah so I might even use those I might make a couple of interesting things especially with all this mad stuff that's happening you know if I could be filming the mad things and then edit them in the Grand Theft Auto editor 
and then plop them over to YouTube, I could end up with some fairly interesting videos for you guys. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, it's just like, uh, everything's just kicking off right now. And then, of course, there's been all the things that the, while I've been away from YouTube for the last week or so, you know, we've had that, those two numpties that turned up to shoot a bunch of people at, Nint at Nintendo conference thing. And it's like, and they got caught. Good for that. Good for the cops there. They actually did something good. Yeah. Instead of shooting black people. Wow. American cops do something good. Wow. Um, you know, there's just been this happening, that happening, you know. And, you know, I, I'm really excited by what I've been seeing from all the recent batch of Assassin's Creed Syndicate trailers. That is fascinating to me. I really want to do a video about that. I really dig into it, but it's getting the footage because, well, you know, I don't think Ubisoft are going to let me copy down the footage that they've released. Considering that most of the footage they've released is either been it's been mostly through IGN, and so it's got that IGN logo in the bottom corner. If I use that, I'm going to get I'm going to get copyright strike in a second if that. So that's an issue in itself, and uh, of course the one issue that everyone has been talking about recently is this whole DLC debacle with um, Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I gotta admit, it's a stinky, stinky move. I don't know what they're thinking over there. It's like, you know, you can have this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. Oh, this thing, this thing, this thing. You can mix it and match it. Now, I, when I first saw the scene there, I thought, well, that's interesting. I mean, you know, although a lot of people, you know, dislike the idea of pre-ordering, it kind of sounds nice to be able to, you know, pick and choose your pre-order a little bit, you know. You might not want an art book. You might just want some more DLC. I know that's what I always look for. If I have to do, if I, I'm going in for a pre-order, then I want to make sure if I'm getting a pre-order, I'm getting lots of cool DLC. I want stuff that makes the game more awesome. So I thought well, that's cool. You can make the game more awesome. And then they started talking about all these different tiers. So like, uh, the more pre-orders there are, the more stuff gets released in the different tiers of the money you've spent for the pre-orders. So uh, hang on. So you're trying to secure pre-orders. You're trying to get the money for a game that's basically sight unseen, unplayed game. You know, and you're wanting everybody to cough up extra for and you're that unsure that people are going to do it. You're trying to entice people into it by telling them they'll get more stuff with more than down, more than pre-order. And then, <laughs> the real kick in the balls is sort of like, to really try and reel people in, they go, and if, ev if loads and loads and loads and loads of people pre-order, we'll release the day game four days early. And I'm like, well, one, you know, we've waited a long time for this game, and we're chucking sixty quid at it, and it's on our next gen, it's on next gen systems. How about you just give us the whole game, and then it be funny in a bit, and screw your pre-order, you know? I'd rather the game came out when it comes out. I don't care about four days early, you know, because you know it might be it comes out four days early, you know. And say I, to, say I decide to take the time off work to go to the midnight launch, which I might do, who knows, then what would be the point? Because then I'd have to get the day moved four days back with my governor. Nah, that wouldn't be happening. You know, it's like, you know, to try and get days moved around for that. I don't see that happening for a lot of people. And let's be a lot of people like to go to midnight launches. It's just all kinds of messed up, you know. It's I don't know what you're thinking over there, guys. Uh, but nah, don't be doing this, just don't. And then of course for DLCs, this morning Bethesda comes out and goes, uh, beginning the next year we're gonna put out uh, a deal, uh, um, a season pass or DLC, a season pass. This game's going to be this gigantic, sprawling thing, full of content. All of a sudden, you want me to buy more content. Now, okay, yeah, you were able to buy expansion packs for Fallout 3, and I believe also for New Vegas, you know. 
But that was after the game had already been a massive success and they were like, oh, well, maybe we better have a bit more stuff to this so there's more people to play it and blah blah blah. And that was fine, that was dandy, that wasn't too expensive. And the fact of the matter was, after a while, it got really cheap. But, you know, the games, that, even though it is Fallout 4, it is still technically sight unseen. We don't know, we don't know a whole hell of a lot about it, rightly so, because we want to keep it interesting. We want the secrets. And we want this to be a surprise, like we want Star Wars to be a surprise, you know? We want Fallout 4 to be a surprise, because we're going to all be spending quite a lot of time on the wasteland, and we want it to be special and interesting. And although, you know, there will be patches along the way and stuff, I'm just like, really? A, a DLC pack? I'm spending a hundred quid on getting a Pip-Boy edition. And then you want me to chuck you another 30, 35 quid for a season pass? You better tell me what's going to be in that season pass. Well ahead of schedule. If you think I'm chucking you 35 quid for a bunch of stuff I don't know what is. At least I had a good idea of what I was getting for the Batman one. And I paid up for that because I thought that was good stuff. And I'd say it's been 60% good so far. You know, the challenge maps, yeah, but the Harley Quinn mission, yeah, and the Batgirl matter of the family, yeah, and the Red Hood, maybe going to be a bit longer, but it's still fun. Wasn't quite so happy with the mechanics on Red Hood, but yeah. But basically, all in all, this sort of last week or so, especially today, I've just been completely, absolutely bonkers. And, uh, yeah. I've just not been in the mood for making videos because there's nothing I really want to talk about because everybody else was talking about it and I didn't want to be the guy that copies everybody because that's just not how I roll. But after seeing what I saw the day with, you know, with Bethesda and Rockstar and Bungie and Apple and, oh my God, it's just boom! <laughs> so, yeah, thoughts, feelings, Share them down below, uh, typey typey typey, and please, if you really do think, as uh, some people have been saying to me recently in the comments section, that you really like the stuff I'm making, then please, please, tell other people, evangelize for Zenbiok. <laughs> nah, but seriously guys, I'm going to end this video the way I always do, please remember to rate, favourite, comment, share and subscribe. Of course, as always, I never bother.